Hey guys, was geht ab? And welcome to this video. As I lately realized, you guys like my color grading videos the most. So I thought, all right, let's do another one. And today we are talking about the film or vintage look, however you name it. Let's get started. As you maybe noticed, I'm using Lightroom for the most of my color grading. But of course, if you want to use Photoshop, that's not a problem at all. You can just go ahead and use the camera raw filter in Photoshop and then you will be able to use the same tools and the same techniques in Photoshop and you will achieve the exact same look. So let's don't waste time and let's get started in Lightroom. All right, so here we are in the develop tool in Lightroom. As always, I start with the basics to kind of prepare my image for the further editing steps. If you want to know more about the basic panel, make sure to check out one of the first videos on my YouTube channel where I basically break down every single slider. That's already it and I don't touch clarity, dynamic and saturation for now. If we need them, we can still use them later. Now we can focus on the really important stuff, the curves. That's where the magic is happening, guys. That's where the vintage looks are coming from. And sadly, the curves are not really the easiest tool in Lightroom. And I'm not going to explain it in detail because it would just be super boring and super theoretical. However, I will keep it very practical and show you everything you need to know. First of all, I want to create a little bit of a faded look. To do that, create three anchor points. Then bring the anchor point in the left corner a little bit up. This way you get this faded look in the shadows. And if you want to have the same effect in the highlights as well, just bring down the anchor point in the right corner a little bit or actually as far as you want to. If you're interested in that specific look, check out my YouTube channel because I already did a complete video just about this effect. <laughs> All right, now I want to color grade the image. In order to do that, switch to the red channel. Then bring down the red tones in the shadows a little bit and create a second anchor point to bring back the highlights. By doing that, the blue and green channels only dominate in the shadows, which is why the shadows are colored <laughs> something in between like green and blue. Okay, now let's enhance this look with the other two channels. As I want to have a little bit more green than blue in the shadows, I bring down the blue curve just a little bit in the shadows. Now I want to have a little bit more this cyan teal color in the highlights. To achieve that, bring up the blues and greens in the highlights and yeah, then we need to create another anchor point here because otherwise it would be too much green in the image. Doesn't look too good, right? Yeah, let's just switch to the other curve by clicking on this little icon. Here you can influence the brightness of your image. First of all, bring up the shadows and darks. Then drag the lights and highlight slider to the left. Now the image looks a lot better and we already achieved kind of a film look. Before we continue with some more techniques, I want to give you another example on the curve so that you can understand the curves a little bit better. So let's say I want to have more of these reddish purple tones in the shadows. Purple is the color between blue and red. So what I need to do is to bring the red curves in the shadows up first. Then I bring down the green tones a little bit and then maybe the blues as well. Now we can also adjust the highlights again to keep this complementary look. I bring up the blues a little bit and then the greens even more. As you can see, the curves are not that hard to understand. You just need to keep a little bit of the color theory in the back of your head. All right, but for now I want to go back to this greenish look we created at the first side and then we can continue to learn some more techniques. For the next technique, we are scrolling all the way down to one of my favorite tools in Lightroom to the camera calibration. Again, I already created another tutorial where I go a little bit more deeply into the topic of camera calibration. So make sure to check that out. That being said, start with the blue hue slider and drag it to the middle left. Then also drag the saturation slider down to something around minus 20. The next step is to bring up the green and red hue slider and I think we can bring up the green saturation slider a little bit as well if you we bring down the red one to keep the skin tones nice and natural. As a last step in the camera calibration you can enhance the greenish look by using the tint slider for the shadows. Just drag the slider to something around minus 20. Before we continue with the HSL panel we can activate the lens correction. As I really like the vignetting of my lens for this look, I bring back the vignetting slider to zero. And of course, every film look needs some grain, right? 
So head over to the effects panel and use an amount of 50, a size of 50 and a roughness of 50. But of course, feel free to choose your own favorite settings here. Now scroll up to the HSL panel really quick. This really depends on your image. Other than adjusting the skin tones with the orange slider, I like to bring down the luminance and saturation of the green, aqua and blue tones. But again, feel free to judge for yourself what your image needs here. All right, we are almost done. A very easy tool to color grade your image is split toning. Let's say you're too lazy to adjust the curves and you want to have more browns in the shadows and more cyan in the highlights. Just press Alt and select the color you like and then bring up the saturation as far as you want to. Same technique works perfectly for the highlights. After selecting your color and adjusting the saturation, you can use the balance to teach Lightroom where the highlights and the shadows actually are. <laughs> All right, that's it, I think. Hell lot of techniques, right? Well, I have a last one for you. If you want to add a little bit more vignetting, click on the radial filter and create a large circle around your model. Then bring down the exposure as far as you want to or play around with the other sliders. At the end, bring up the feathering to 100 to have a soft vignette. All right, let's compare one last time what we created today. And I'm really proud of you if you made it until this point. I think you're ready to color grade your own images now and create your own unique style. <laughs> All right, guys, that's already it. And as always, if you like the video, consider to hit that subscribe button because I'm uploading almost every week a new tutorial for you. Other than that, I would recommend to head over to my website somewhere here and and check out the presets because some of them are even for free without any email opt-in or anything like that so you can just go ahead and download them feel free to do that and we will see us next week